So Wagner's supposed influence in literature is very often mentioned in academic discourse. The, the examples uh, on my slide is just a very small uh, chunk of, of all the examples. Uh, there are many others. According to these narratives, 20th century authors may have been inspired or challenged by Wagner's artistic achievement, above all by the idea and practice of the Gesamtkunstwerk, or at least by their understanding of it. Uh, for instance, as uh, the French philosopher Philip uh, Lattenbach uh, argues uh, about Stefan Mallarmé, that's how uh, the French poet uh, felt the challenge in, uh, in Wagnerian Gesamtkunstwerk for his own uh, poetic purposes. So anyway, uh, some argue that Wagner could serve as a model uh, for even major 20th century literary works like Marcel Proust, Alain Chef, Don Perdu, In Search of the Lost Time. Even uh, music semiotricians such as uh, Jean-Jacques Nattier in his 1984 book Proust Musicien, Proust is a Musician, or Ero Tarassi uh, in his uh, Proust and Wagner uh, essay in his uh, 2012 uh, book, uh, The Semiotics Music. Uh, how Mozart comes and Wagner talk to us. So uh, the former, Mathieu, uh, claims that music serves as a utopistic model for literature in Proust's uh, narrative, that the narrator can only fulfill his quest of becoming a writer after becoming capable of understanding music. Although the piece in question is the fictional one place of that, uh, Mathieu puts, uh, puts a special emphasis on Wagner and Proust's uh, relation to his music, and he also draws a parallel uh, between the plot of Proust's cycle and the uh, Wagner Farsifal. I will get back to this uh, a little bit later. Um, while Tarasti uh, even assumes that the French author's monumental novel cycle could be interpreted as a literary representation uh, of Wagner's ring, he actually uses the word ekphrasis, um, which, uh, which is very interesting, I think. It is also often assumed that the so-called Wagnerian influence can be witnessed in the poetic techniques of some authors especially in the supposed literary adaptation of Wagner's so-called leitmotiv technique, uh, such as Barry Millington, uh, you can see some slight claims uh, about Proust, or uh, Dorota Kirschbaum, uh, um, a German scholar in, in, her, uh, in her recent uh, thesis about Thomas Mann, or uh, um, a much uh, older uh, monograph of A. Walton Litz um, about uh, James Joyce Hughes uh, also claims. So while of these, Kirschbaum is the only one I know of, uh, to support her claims with detailed analyses of the Wagnerian, the supposed Wagnerian literary text, uh, Mons Joseph and his brothers, uh, Joseph and his brothers in her case. Some, like Litz and also Millington, even talk about an entire tradition of the Wagnerian novel in connection with light movies, um, like, uh, yeah. uh, in which certain authors would be, I mean, like in, in which tradition, uh, certain authors would be especially successful in imitating or adapting Wagnerian techniques. However, we don't get to know how, and especially why, the repetition and counterpoint uh, would work in a, music, in a musical or Wagnerian kind of development uh, in these novels. So, uh, also, we are not even told, uh, neither by Litz nor by Millington, what these motives uh, exactly are in the literary text itself, and especially why would they be light motives instead of the simply, you know, motives. Uh, the first problem is, that the concept of motive are somewhat, is somewhat different in musicology uh, and the literary studies. Like uh, I can uh, uh, refer back to the uh, the content in Floral Strand Round Table, where I also start, I try to uh, ask a question about this because like uh, this is particularly interesting in this problem. Uh, so the peculiarities of the involved media uh, and their modalities, uh, like respectively, uh, influence these uh, these uh, converging converging this, uh, this differentiating uh, theories um, of, uh, of the motive. Uh, in, in this, uh, I mean, like, uh, in terms of modalities, I rely on, uh, on Lars Ellerström, the uh, uh, semiotician and uh, media scholar, Swedish uh, semiotician and media scholar's theory uh, on, on media modalities, uh, in which he, um, he distinguishes, like, uh, three principal modalities and, and the fourth uh, modality, which is a semiotic modality. In the three first modalities, uh, there's the material modality, the sensorial and spatial temporal modality. And like there are obvious differences in, in, these, uh, in these primary modalities uh, between music and literature, like uh, the main uh, uh, vehicle being sound versus written words, uh, the main uh, way of sensing uh, being hearing uh, versus vision, uh, also um, music sort of uh, 
uh, using a real time and space while, while literature always sort of building up an imaginary time and space while, uh, while reading, etc. What is interesting uh, for us at the moment is that uh, from these, uh, it, follows the, it follows the differences in the semiotic modality. Um, for instance, there are no stable referentiality or double articulation in music compared to that of language, which of course have a more or less stable referentiality. Uh, therefore, uh, denotation is much weaker. I mean, from a semiotic sense, denotation is much weaker in music. That is to say, much more emphasis has to be put on the signifier in music, musical discourse, to counter this, and that is uh, basically the, um, uh, the basis of repetition or the, the, the very important role of repetition in music. Uh, that is to say, or therefore, uh, repetitions and motives uh, have a strong syntactic, very strong syntactic function uh, in music, while literary motives are traditionally defined like as early as, uh, as Vladimir Prop's uh, work on the Russian folk which is like the, the amazing work of, uh, of uh, literary motive theory. So they are traditionally defined as semantic units with much stronger emphasis on, uh, on connotation. Conspicuously, Wagner himself also seemed to be aware of this, I mean, like the difference, uh, when he criticized Walt Sogan's use of the term light motive, claiming that his young friend, as he referred to Walt Sogan, not being a musician himself, I mean, Walt Sogan not being a musician, had not understood the role of his motives in musical phrase building. Although in his earlier theoretical writings, especially in opera and drama, Wagner himself seems to emphasize the external, that is to say the narrative, dramatic, uh, or like in general poetic determination of the melodic moments, as he calls them, uh, see his extended and also somewhat sexist metaphor of music being the female principle, one, the one that gives birth, and the poetry being the male principle, the one that impregnates. Yeah, I'm sorry, yes. <laughs> it's all, it's all yeah. yeah. Um, so um, not getting very deeply into the question of how the composer's own theories changed over time, it is for sure that the term leitmotiv, in the sense Walt Sogan used it, which then became widespread in and outside of musicology, actually relies on the implied goal of approximating musical motives to literary ones. Therefore, the concept of the Wagnerian novel not only relies on reading certain novels through Wagner, but also the opposite reading and interpreting Wagner from the point of view of 20th century narrative literature. That is to say, interpreting Wagner's musical dramas as if they were sort of stage novels set to music, in which the orchestra would be uh, interpreted or would be regarded as a narrative voice, uh, see uh, uh, Carolina Bate's uh, uh, theory about Wagner, in, in which uh, the orchestra is one of the narr narrating voices besides the character's narration uh, in, in Ring, and also uh, the above mentioned Dorothea Kirschbaum's uh, theory, who treats uh, Wagner's orchestra as a quasi omniscient heterodiagetic narrator. Um, light motivic interpretation, therefore, relies on interpreting musical no motives as narrative signs, see uh, Carolina Navate again. Um, although this is only one aspect uh, of them, I mean, like uh, it highlights. Narrative, semant the narrative semantic aspect, but not the performativity and not the performativity aspect, for instance. Uh, so, but the aspect is highlighted, the aspect what is highlighted is that the, is the aspect, is the aspect uh, which can be paralleled with literary narration. Uh, and, and that is uh, interesting for us at the moment. So that is to say, both the literary leitmotiv and the Wagnerian novel concepts rely on the assumption that a narrative representation unfolds in a somewhat similar manner uh, in certain novels as it does in Wagner's works. But if the concept of Wagnerian leitmotiv already refers to the literary narrative aspect of music, wouldn't it make each, wouldn't it make each novel a Wagnerian novel? In spite of this unsettling question, it is still a fact that certain novels are labeled as Wagnerian much more frequently than others. One common element in these novels, I mean like in the Wagnerian novels, is that they contain excessive repetitions uh, of certain motives one could even claim unnecessarily frequent repetition, repetitions for a literary text, and that these repetitions are interpreted as having a fundamental role in the meaning-making process of the text. For instance, he uh, able to lift his claim about Joyce and Proust, and he also talks about uh, Faulkner and Virginia Woolf here, um, that the, re the recapitulation of certain semantic cores, which are labeled as either images or motives in his, uh, in his analysis, 
eventually leads to the creation of a semantic structure that forces the interpreter to retrospectively re-evaluate re the entire narrative. I mean, like by Joyce, first of all. Um, that is to say, sort of hermeneutic cycle is being made visible or that uh, the narrative meaning making uh, or like, like a self-reflexive statement is made on narrative meaning making, I would say. It has also been already been repeatedly assumed by scholars such as Claude Lévi-Strauss to say uh, one of the first and others following him, that Wagner's music, especially the motivic commentaries of the orchestra, is capable of revealing the process of narrative meaning making exactly through repetition, as Levi Strauss uh, claims it. That is to say, the motivic repetition and the orchestra voice in Wagner's work are supposed to lead the listener through a process in which they do not only understand the presented story, but the narrative understanding or the genesis of narrative meaning itself. Arguably, Wagner's recurring music can actually be perceived as if they presented a model of narrative understanding through presenting the layers of narrative meaning and those of semiotic interpretation as narrative signs, as pure functioning is signs in general, in temporally distinct phases. So, and here is the, uh, the important part. Taking a look at Wagner's leitmotifs from the perspective of narrative structure and, of, uh, and semiosis, we may distinguish three levels in both, both cases, which match quite perfectly with each other, despite the theories uh, of, of Graymas and Peirce are not very often treated so, so I, I, am, I am now making a very, very bold attempt to reconcile these, uh, uh, these theories uh, of, uh, of Graymas and Peirce. So actually, at first, at stage one, uh, which I labeled as stage one, we only hear certain musical motives as salient material, and mostly thanks to uh, stylistic, but also sometimes uh, to, to strategic madness. I mean, like I refer to Robert Hatton's theory of musical madness here. Uh, for instance, by Wagner, uh, music uh, motives like Ring uh, or the Valhalla, or the renunciation of love or the sword, the spear, etc. Uh, like these are motive names used by Walzo again, but uh, after Walzo again, they are they are adapted in in, in most uh, Wagner analyses. Um, are uh, a sort of you know uh, made salient. Um, so they are uh, they appear at the level of manifestation from a Grammarian perspective, and they appear as more or less pure quality or as a person first, um, or um, uh, as perceived by or like as perceived in an immediate interpretant in a uh, in a Persian uh, perspective. Then at stage two, the repetition of certain motives help us interpret different dramatic situations under the same paradigm, thereby establishing actantial roles and functions, which leads to narrative utterances in a Grimacian sense at the surface level of what Grimas uh, calls the surface level, which is like the narrative utterance uh, for Grimas is a junction between actants. Uh, uh, for instance, like the renunciation, uh, the, ren the respective renunciations of Alberic and Siegmund, uh, the first one being love for power and the second one being life, being life for love, um, uh, and you know, like uh, referred to uh, this way, and like they clearly present junctions, and they really clearly work as narrative utterances uh, in a Grimacian sense, or like uh, the Ring and the Valhalla motifs uh, being variants of each other, uh, which connects uh, all very importance and the deeds and goals and, and etc. Um, which, um, from a person's perspective, um, establishes a relation and a person's second, um, which also. Um, uh, connects to the, to the dynamical interpreter. Finally, at stage three, a connection of networks, or like a connection, a network of connections, sorry, uh, between motives are established. That is to say, a coherent interpretation of the whole becomes possible. That the, through the systemic similarities and oppositions, uh, the individual motives are located within the semantic network of the entire piece, like how uh, motives like ring, Valhalla, sword, sphere, etc., relate to fundamental semantic categories such as nature and civilization, love and power, freedom and coercion, etc., like in a uh, classical Grimacian structure. I didn't draw the semantic squares, but I think you can imagine. Um, which is, um, at the same time, uh, sort of works the Perthian third or a final interpretant, like, you know, uh, as a relation of relations or like a, a so, sort of semantic totality. And I can refer back uh, at this point to, uh, to Matthew Stanley's fascinating presentation to, uh, from, from yesterday, in which he said that like, uh, which I 100% agree with, that like 
of course, uh, the, sec the second, yeah, the first never contains the second, and the second never contains the third. And it is, I see it as 100% true, but also it's complementary is true. That is to say, the second always contains the first, and the third always contains the second. So, like, basically, that's why first says that, for instance, like all symbols are essentially iconic in, in like, have something essentially iconic in this in this course. So, like, basically, everything comes from the first and goes through the second, through the third uh, in interpretation in uh, uh, in Peirce's uh, theory. So, once the fundamental categories of a given interpretation are established. They also retrospectively change the formal levels. That is to say, the Persian final interpreter is not a terminus, rather a turning point uh, of semiosis. So one may call, uh, one may talk about a hermeneutic cycle, so to say, or like uh, what uh, Matthew uh, referred to as endless semiosis yesterday. It's um, it's something like that. Uh, so, and I'm now close to concluding. Uh, like actually show some examples. But, both in Proust's Alain Chère du Temps Perdu and in Joyce's Ulysses, uh, so both, the, both novels can be read in a very similar manner, actually. In the former, in, uh, by Proust, the final revelation uh, at the Gamma Interception, which is uh, compared uh, to Parsifal's Enlightenment by Natier, uh, which I, uh, I mentioned earlier, involves the narrator becoming the reader of himself, actually, uh, it's called Lecto de Soamem uh, in the French text, to fulfill his quest to become a writer, through the understanding, I mean, he achieves this through the understanding uh, of the power of analogies and involuntary memory, involuntarily memory, uh, instead of the formally established opposing categories like aristocracy versus bourgeoisie, the gammon side versus the basically side, the anti dreyfusards versus the revolutionary revisionists, etc. So, like, they, they all prove to be useless at the end of the day. So, it's like uh, revealing sort of the narrative, uh, the nature of narrative speaking, meaning making by. Uh, by building up uh, a seemingly uh, coherent narrative making, which collapses at the end, at the very end of the cycle, after like 3,000 pages. <laughs> uh, yeah. In the latter, I mean, like in Joyce's novel, Molly's closing monologue, which is much comparable to Brunhilde's closing monologue from Wagner's Götterdämmerung, also features a, recapit a recapitulation of most of the novel's main motives, which are often, for instance, which are often manifested in names, for instance, the different versions of flower, I mean, like, uh, for Bloom's name uh, already, or like you get to know that his father was, uh, was a Hungarian Jew who immigrated to Ireland and uh, his original name was Rudolf Virag, which is a Hungarian word for flower. Um, and like uh, often, uh, uh, Bloom often refers to Molly as, uh, as a flower or a rose, uh, et cetera. So that this is a very essential motive, but also other motives um, uh, in, uh, imply uh, intertextual references to of course, the Odyssey, uh, or Mozart's Don Giovanni, or Freddy for Floto's opera Martha, uh, or Shakespeare's Hamlet, etc. Uh, and all these motives are recontextualized in, uh, in Mowgli's closing monologue uh, along the, the main topics of the novel, like religion, duty, life and death, matrimonial fidelity, etc. Uh, so, to conclude, uh, from this point of view, Wagnerian novel, this very concept of the Wagnerian novel, is actually nothing but a sign itself. Uh, talking about infinite semiosis, that the parallel drawn between these literary works and Wagner, based on the iconic resemblance of the self reflexive capacity of motive repetitions, makes the supposed Wagnerism of these novels sort of heuristic framework of interpretation, uh, which basically functions uh, as a tool for explaining the peculiarities of their narrative strategies. And with this, I can thank you for attention. I hope I didn't, uh, didn't talk too, uh, too quick. <laughs> so, uh, but maybe if you have any questions, on the, oh, like, uh, do we have time? Uh, did yes, you check? Do, do. Okay. Yes. Also, 
also the right note is the mm -hmm. tech, musical technique present in it. Don't even need the polish? Yes. Um, only the same as the Perhaps she should put some Arabic. Yes, we will have to translate. I have a question, very stupid question, but perhaps you, you can explain it. But I read many times that James Joyce in Ulysses, the Ulysses, used the Wagnerian fugue, the structure of Wagnerian fugue, or else or something like that. Is it true or not? This is one question. Mm -hmm. And the other remark, perhaps you, uh, the other uh, composers present in the uh, literary text, uh, kind of presentation existence of uh, literary in the literature of the, the composers in music. I think about Balzac and Rossini in his, uh, in his text, especially of course uh, Massimilia Doni and uh, Mother Egipto uh, by, by Rossini that uh, is a structure for, for the not, not short story by Massimilia Doni we have a structure given uh, by uh, musical world, we have also the criminal yeah. interpretation of what happened on the stage, and we have uh, also the musical analysis of this uh, this uh, opera. So the question is, if you compare the, the other musicians, the other composers present in the literary work, or you work on Wagner? Yeah, it's. I think it was already a much too ambitious topic for a PhD thesis. I mean, like I just realized that when I was, you know, uh, when I had to, uh, you know, submit the thesis. Perhaps you know uh, the book by Michael Cunningham of the novel into operas uh, about and uh, opera from mm -hmm. 2005 or 2006. It's a work I need to study. But actually, I think it's uh, it's actually worth. Um, Considering even um, even in, in connection with other uh, composers and other literatures, like very you know often often assumed topos that like uh, certain novels uh, imply or like uh, apply uh, certain um, musical uh, techniques like uh, fugue etc. Et um, which is like uh, what I was trying to say is that like actually it's never. Um, it's never a perfect analogy. So it's like this analogy is, is nothing but a sign relation itself, uh, which has a particular sign function. Um, and like, uh, so we have to, uh, so we have to understand why, uh, why do we need this signification? Like, because like, otherwise, you know, the, the parallel is always, uh, can, can always be criticized. Like, uh, like, of course they are similar in this manner, but in like in many other uh, ways, they are, uh, they are a lot, they are they're not uh, like each other. So it's, uh, so it's actually, uh, I think if we, um, if we took a step further and, uh, and reflect on it as a sign relation, that's, it's, it, it, be, it may be more useful, uh, or like at least more defensible, which is like this. Uh, it's also, you know, uh, <laughs> it's also a big, uh, uh, big gain in, uh, in the academic world. <laughs> yeah. Um, excuse me, Professor Kaharski had um, a word that he wanted to ask, and I will need the uh, session for you to share because uh, unfortunately I have to go. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. It's very, very fascinating topics. <laughs> it's also very close to my, myself and my studies. Uh, the second thing I want to say is that the um, idea of Wagnerian novel uh, belongs to a very, very broad paradigm of different cases, and even even other novels dealing with music and other composers have a lot of the, the exciting uh, points of comparison. Uh, let's say John Sand, we have uh, Roswell, we have uh, Franz Werfel there, we have uh, Thomas Mann, Robert Musil. So Wagner is present in, in many ways, but then, uh, but I would say that perhaps the question is Wagnerian novel. Can be led into the really the, the textual strategy of, of Wagneria, Wagner's music and and and, and uh, prose in, in literature. And I try to show that they've been Proust and Wagner how how dealing with the techniques, uh, near techniques of or writing has similarities. Like if Wagner we have let's say typically um, we may have uh, let's say religious farewell or or anything like that, and then comes. Um, Suddenly, the minute seventh chord, and from that we can uh, go on to whatsoever uh, key of tonality. So that um, 
music can, can uh, take a very sudden turn to a totally unexpected direction. That is my favorite case is, of course, developing the Torresberg Unicus, where we are at the end, Brugia sings uh, if you think the word Zeek, we have maybe the cement form. Mm -hmm. So we know ah, that is not the truth. Mm -hmm. so, but anyway, um, uh, and then Bruce Prowse, I noticed the same techniques that there have been long phrases, as you know, in Proust, uh, not one full page, and at the end, suddenly, it turns around into a totally other direction. Mm -hmm. So I think on that level, certainly there is something, some kind of binarism. But then mm -hmm. um, your semiotic interpretation, very fascinating, and you side by side in Ramos and first, but, but uh, um, I've been thinking that they are very different in their reason, the first and Gremas after all. <laughs> because first, I think it is first, second, they are some kind of, I would say, phenomenal categories starting from the immediate perception with the firstness. Mm -hmm. I see something first, I see you. First, I, 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 Mr. Nagy, second, this is similar, but Barger, third. Because in Gremas, um, it is not a psychological. Uh, this um, generative course, it is uh, more logical uh, series or logical inferences, uh, which was criticized by Paul Ricoeur, who said that um, he is smuggling, however, uh, in this process, external elements there, so that it's not real. Uh, but that's another story. But then, you know, I think that they are, but it's fascinating that we put them side by side, and, and maybe, maybe you might uh, analyze some. Some uh, Wagnerian novel uh, in two manners, but by Grimas and yeah, I actually or... did. I actually did just you know that like uh, it was a whole PhD project, and I, I couldn't very deep, very go very deep into the details and like in, in twenty minutes. But like um, actually, actually, uh, it just got published in Hungarian, uh, oh. and I'm now looking for an English publisher. So oh, maybe yes. if I find 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 one, like maybe. Well, try to say, to say, submit a proposal for working with established degree. They are really open for this kind of research. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, but it's not, this is not difficult. Mm -hmm. They say yes or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, to, to reflect on uh, Professor from yes, uh, actually, uh, it's true that like uh, grandmas and first had very different agendas in like, you know, because it's always the thing that uh, uh, behind every theory there is just sort of an agenda, like there is a, an ultimate goal which, uh, uh, which it wants to uh, achieve. Uh, and they, they are very different in, in case of, uh, of Grimas and Peirce, but in, in a way, uh, I, I think they are, I'm not saying they are, anal uh, they are analogous, I'm, I'm just saying they are comparable. Uh, yeah, I think time's passing, so like maybe uh, we have- I want to just about, uh, about um, Grimas in the- and then there are dangers in Gremas, yeah. <laughs> there are dangers because Gremas never said when you should stop applying uh, and when, when you continue. Mm -hmm. So, uh, because let's say if you have if you study, let's say, so one motive in prose, let's say, uh, in Thomas Mann, let's say something, or, or, or in what we have there, you don't need to, to catalyze the whole parkour generative field, all the stuff, you need it on, on one level. But they must never told, told exactly when you have to stop using that. And that's why um, I think he was uh, not rejecting, but, but he's in, uh, it passed away in the background, this generative idea. It was very 1980s, uh, John Tomsky's idea, it was fashionable. So we, it came something different. So that, uh, there is that danger. Yeah, like uh, the thing is that like, actually, I, um, I didn't mention it, but like Grandma actually thought it was in the text. I'm thinking it is an interpretation, actually. So it's like more. It's more like the structure of the interpretation than the structure of the text, yeah, uh, which is like, so I actually, I read Bremas from the perspective of birth, which is like maybe a mortal sin, but uh, uh, whatever. Uh, but I think that we should have to, uh, uh, to go for uh, our next presenter. Uh, okay, so how do we change the... Not yet, because... Because like... Uh, Screen, yeah, so we don't have to switch the okay. Yeah, okay, so, um, uh, yeah, uh, so first of all, and I, as a, uh, as a chair of the, 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 the session, I, uh, I present to you that, like, uh, so, like, we have two presenters, uh, yes. like, uh, 
of course, uh, online, uh, welcome, uh, Monica Kakachowska from uh, Music Theoretician and an Assistant Professor of uh, Studies of Municipal Music Academy in Tons, Poland, um, and um, uh, an author of monograph on Polish composer Andrzej Dobrowolski, uh, and uh, our other presenter, uh, Anna uh, Galikowska-Kajewska, also from uh, the same institution, who is the head of the Eurythmics Department, all right? Yeah. All right, this year. okay. And also um, uh, teaching rhythmic music choreography, piano improvisation, has held many uh, workshops and uh, seminars in several countries and uh, has a great number of fascinating <laughs> projects. And so we are eager to hear. Uh, uh, and so. so it's like uh, it's Monica. Yes, Monica. Buenos dias. Uh, uh, can you see my uh, presentation? Um, no. Well, we are seeing you right now. Like, share your screen. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you should, uh, no. you should put that to the end. See my presentation. That's fine. Okay. Uh, the uh, intersemiotic relationships uh, between contemporary poetry and music notation have already been mentioned in Polish and foreign literature. I seriously consider the uh, motivation behind examining this issue is a deliberate attempt at exploring the areas related to the structure, musical and literary affiliations, characteristic of an intermedial work. It is worth nothing at a point that a work is intermedial, as Arthur Tiber, a specialist on intermedial issues and phases, not only when it combines, uh, assimilates and synthesizes different means of expression, achieving in this way the state of independence and autonomy, but when it combines then in its own unique way. Uh, thus, it's not the number of the media combined in the artifact which makes it intermedial, but only their mutual interaction and transformation uh, by means of the context in self or te uh, technological uh, intervening possibilities. The uh, receiver may find the poet's reference to music in different ways as a score which is seen uh, in the work title or subtitle itself in the form of a self-commentary, mm -hmm. quoting the relevant composition technique, ex expression, dynamic, uh, agogic and articulation markings. And finally, it is literal form where the same structure principles uh, equally to a poetic text and musical score. However, uh, among literary and music scholars, uh, we do not uh, encounter any text which discuss in detail uh, these issues relating to the literature's uh, premission uh, of music uh, and the principal medium, the intermediate reference uh, mentioned by Werner Wolf. Uh, in this uh, intense transmediality can equally appear uh, on the content level alone. Example, the uh, case of creation arc uh, uh, typo subject matters and uh, themes, which may be in the, uh, and, uh, identified in the verbal text of musical works. Transmediality addresses the problem of translating the artistic means and practices identifying a given work. And Bayer convices techniques into the device of a work which represents of different artistic of scholarly discipline. That which exists above the medium makes it's possible to translate or transfer the content and the artistic means from one medium into another. It is common knowledge uh, that uh, the elements of the medium permit uh, the context of another medium together with its narrative, 
as it is not possible to isolate and transfer the narrative along the, another medium. Uh, the phenomenon of artistic ekphrasis uh, may become an analytical tool for studying various relationships among literature and music, dance, film, painting, or visual arts. In this case, a literary work is created where the author provides an artistic, detailed description of a work of art or its part. It's aesthetic having an aesthetic impact uh, for him uh, or her, her uh, while introducing the description, uh, the element uh, of his or her original subjective interpretation, thanks to which the work of the uh, equis uh, a new dimensions. Uh, it is an entire with a new context and interpretation. Uh, the uh, uh, fundamental task of a phrases uh, is to elicit in the receiver the emotions experienced in the uh, contemplation of the work of art as a result uh, of which in the narrative layer a description is provided of the work of art or a different reference to the uh, perceived art object. However, uh, if a work of art is inspired by another work of literature or art and their interpretation on the emotional and symbolic levels, we deal with an opposite phenomenon, i.e. that of artistic in phrases. Artistic in phrases involves uh, the uh, permission of meta-artistic text being a reflection of non-verbal material musical, choreographic, cinematic, visual, or verbal material in a non-verbal medium. It is the correct analytical term for intermedial works. Example, performance art, visual art, visual music, uh, and choreography with the use of interactive visualization. The author of an interfrastic uh, work conveys emotion through artistic means based on the interpretation of the literary content of uh, or of another work of art, original work. Uh, to clearly uh, outline the uh, distinctions between the media, uh, the author of this uh, presentation choose the uh, artful genre of poetic expression that is the sonnet selected for analyzing intermediate reference uh, was a literary work by Cezary Sikorski, Sonety from the collection of poems 54 Sonety, an example of artistic phrases uh, as well as uh, two musical works by Paweł Mykieten and Stanisław Sojka, a musicalized variant of one of Shakespeare's, Shakespeare's sonnets. Uh, whatever have her wish, uh, that has thy will, an example of artistic in phrases. Musical sonnets also became the subject of a choreographic work uh, whose motive interpretation is filled with emotion and gestures coded uh, in the music and the literary work. The outcome, the choreographic in phrases may uh, and the uh, various elements of the musical composition, its form, musical style and mood, musical elements, the composition of the ensemble, the title, extra musical program, dramaturgy and expression as well as the content symbols and emotion contained in the literary work. The sonnets from the collection 54 sonnets by uh, Cezary Sikorski are a volume of philosophical poetry in which the verbal matter is a dense network of meanings. In uh, Sonnette, one might draw an analogy with the works of Bruno Schulz, the poetry of Tadeusz Nowak, and interpontly uh, we am work uh, uh, by uh, Jan Sebastian Bach. Sikorski, as a poet sensitive to music, approaches the work uh, of a poem with the same piety as the sound in a musical piece. 
Does the deliberately entitled his cycle of sonnets Stuka Fugi, the art of beauties. The fugue as a Baroque music genre and the literary sonnet are among the most refined forms of artistic expression. Both required okay, from the form are difficult in terms of crafts, uh, craftsmanship and are full of symbolism. The sonnets uh, discussed are an example of an analytical uh, exegesis of the interpretation of a musical literary text. For here we deal with Heimey's interpretation of mu musicality of the sound type, where the title of the work becomes uh, the main career of meanings uh, establishing a structural model for the entire cycle of poems. The reference in this structure characterized in the music by artful, full intellectual and formal require based on counterpoint and polyphony is singly in uh, multiple levels from the structure of the cycle of all lyrics to the quotes from formalistic motifs. The presence of the music in the sonnets is also singly by the words being a direct relationships with the music. The titular work uh, by Bach influences the situations than arias in the piece. The sonnets contain implicit reference to Bach's Kunst der Fuge and the explicit reference to the music general, making a case from condensing this work as an intermediality, intermediately premeditated, uh, uh, pre premeditated poem score. The title of this poetry book does not suggest anything the receiver and even more so does it not avoid uh, associations uh, the and the medium outside literature yet the poet devotes the fifth chapter uh, of his cycle of poems the bugs art of future uh, fugue uh, combining in the musical elements with a, a philosophy of life the poet alluded in the idiomatic way to the formal structure of Bach's work. The cycle comprises uh, 20 sonnets, counterpoints, including the uh, uh, theory of, of uh, divide into uh, to separate rectus and inversus, which indicates co constructional analogies with a musical cycle, uh, 19 fugues and canons entitled counterpoints. An overt uh, reference is incl included uh, to the titles of the sonnets, uh, which contain Latin names and num numbering, indicating the names of fugues or canons. Uh, Meanwhile, in uh, the order of presenting individual sonnets was changed with the poet, perhaps uh, tied to box, uh, not imposing in the order of counterpoints in the cycle. The title uh, of the sonnets also contain other musical terms present in Bach, such uh, as names of intervals and which uh, strict imitation, rectus inversus in Stile Francis, and Corale Oku. Essentially, music becomes the main theme of the poems, providing the content with musical terminology to which the poet uh, assigned a symbolic meaning. What art, uh, uh, attracts attention in the literary text of the sonnets in the lack of rhythms and frequent uh, and uh, and with breaks, uh, uh, verses, and even stanzas. The presented sonnets by Paweł Mykietyn and Stanisław Sojka are an example of artistic in phrases developed and, uh, on the basis of the relationships between the verbal medium, literary text, and the non-verbal medium, music. The composer first moved the text of the sonnet uh, to onto uh, the musical work and then reflect together with the music on the choreography, establishing new categories uh, of inter-artistic relationships between the media coming from different sign systems. The sonnet uh, uh, 
chosen from analysis comes from the Shakespeare's cycle of love sonnets. Set to music by the Polish composer Paweł Mekietyn, this sonnet is the fifth of the cycle of six sonnets of Shakespeare, written for male soprano and piano. It is worth nothing the sonnets were being created during a difficult period on the composer's life when the questions the re uh, relevance of his own artistic uh, uh, pursuit. They are among the pieces from the period which he didn't uh, withdraw and the time. Interpreting the text uh, was not meaningless to Maketen. While musicalizing their literary original, uh, he uh, retired from Stanisław Barańczak being well translation. Yet what established the final musical structure of the work, especially the metric rhythmic and intervallic soprano part, was the original English text. McKetten used to love lyrics, uh, uh, whose interpretation is difficult due to the, the controversial text matter. The speaker in the sonnet plays with the ambiguity of the word will, which according the sources means the following. Paweł Mekieten's musical interpretation of Shakespearean lyrics is full of semantic allusions to the love making of two lovers. He illustrates the Shakespearean ambiguous uh, takes and the word will as literal onomatopoeias of love-making male sopranos glissandos accompanied by out tiratas in the piano. Mekieten uh, represents the content of the love lyric uh, through references to the Baroque style, music and literature, as well as self-citation. His symbolic uh, treatment of the text occupies uh, the foreground, making the melody and the soprano independent of the verbal lead. The composer uh, constructs the entire narrative in a comical and sarcastic way, which he achieved by means of this decident uh, progressions, uh, retiring to the initial keys. Uh, this scale runs, frequent change of tempo, vocal melody, alluding the cabaret and musical songs. Spreadgesang layer in the formal structure of the work. The sonnet ends a cadenza with the sopranist flashing and the uh, uh, unsigned trill. The final is the uh, reached on the keys for wheel and entered by the singer. Stanisław Sojka's sonnet album was created in 1994 as an expression of his fascination with the works of William Shakespeare. The album is an uh, example of trivial music which functions in mass culture, yet finds the uh, must full take from its high culture. The composition are fusion of jazz, soul, and poetic song. Soika musicalized the comment of sonnet translated by Barańczak. Again, in this case, the text leads the way. The music and the syncopate bounce rhythm are subordinate to the prosody of the text. The character of the music alludes to the dance of the two lovers. The musicals form imitates from uh, 14 line sonnets, except the soika divide in the into uh, three materially different four line stanzas, uh, with the future separated using the last two lines that function as a refrain. The text and the music of the both variants of the sonnet together with the emotion and the uh, meanings uh, combined variant become the artifact for uh, subsequent creative implication. They have been subject to the choreographic interpretation, the truth of the dancers, the costumes, 
props, body movements, and gestures, providing an example of a choreographics in phrases which makes it possible to the show the uh, presence of the relationships among the different media. The presented sonnets after an example of intermedial works uh, in which one may, uh, may see uh, a juxtaposition of the tense, the sonnet and fugue canon decays of Sikorsky, and the interference between literature and music as well as dance, uh, the emotions conveyed by the content coded in the verbal and the nonverbal medium. The literary sonnets by Sikorsky as an example of artistic phrases contain the poet's clear references to music, mainly the structural elements typical of the work of the Leipzig cantor. Music became on the main themes of this piece and provides a compositional model from Sikorsky's Stuka Fugi. The literary text refers to a specific work of musical art and uh, reinterprets it, thus uh, shopping the, uh, uh, own, uh, its own more complex meaning. Sikorsky's juxtaposition of two genres, literary and musical, created the possibility from finding symbolic and formal analogies whose meaning was determined by the uh, light motif, the subject of life. Vocal love lyrics are maquettes and soika's smooth transition uh, from speech to singing, in which coded are the emotion of the literary content. The presented choreographies of the selected sonnets are not a simple transposition of a musical uh, work made at a fightful uh, translation of musical structures in, into choreographic ones. They were not compo composed with translation into the language of dance in mind, as they were independent uh, compositions. The choreographer uh, composing a new work uh, reinterpreted reinterpreted the original work already its selected elements. Thank you, uh, Anna, Anna Galikowska-Gajewska, please. Yeah. So let me, let me continue our common topic. Um, so first I would like to tell, uh, thank you because I first time uh, take part in the Congress. Monica took part, uh, I don't know, one or two times, but I'm honored to, to present our common research. Um, uh, so, uh, I would like to uh, present uh, the result of my research uh, related to the uh, two sonnets uh, Monica uh, analyzes uh, from this research. I have practiced uh, the process music for 30 years. I'm still fascinated with this medium. And a short remark about Emilia Dacroix, the beginning of 20th century, uh, created the absolutely new kind of music education system like European. He was a pioneer in thinking about harmonious human development, body and soul. He used music as a means to achieve this goal. Can I have another slide? Uh -huh. uh, what does it mean, Eurythmics and three sentences defined by a uh, creator and in her records? Eurythmics method is the method of education through music and for music. Its Eurythmic method is the preparation for the art. And the rhythmic method is creating in the organism simple and fast communication between all of the centers of movement and thought. Keep to the other side, Monica. Doesn't work. So far, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Uh, epicentrum of the crosses method is music. Mm -hmm. My own system I build on music because it's a mighty mental power resulted from our spiritual and expressive activity, which ability is to stimulate and regulate our life function. The process method is a con a consists of three branches, eurythmic and plastic anime, solfege, and improvisation. 
I want to put a heavy accent on that. Plastic and mass. Any gender cross developed his own art form, plastic and mass. But nowadays the movement expression, a crucial element of movement interpretation of music, which composes an artistic dimension of the Eurythmics. The essence of the movement interpretation of music is a close relationship between music and the movement. Vakros, in his research of expressive movement, went back to the ancient Greek culture. He had been studying the construction of the Greek sculpture, from which he extracted 20 gestures applied to the plastic and mass. You will see the cue from the 20 gesture and the first movement interpretation uh, composed by Emil Jacques Dalcross. It was happened in 1912 or 15 in Hellerau, Institute of Emil Jacques Dalcross near the Preston. So, Mika, I'll skip to the other. Uh, music and inspiration. I mean, about general about the music, pieces of music, of creating choreography of music. Emil Jacques Dalcross thought, but it a perfect instrument for movement expression should be trained by special artistic studies. That cross explored that the body movement can be used to express a piece music. He made this fact the basis of his education. So what is the movement interpretation of musical piece or other words, choreography of music? It's my definition. Uh, movement interpretation of uh, so many uh, uh, of musical pieces are the most beautiful and the most perfect way of reflecting music by means of special movement measures. They constitute the synthesis of music and movement, thanks to which they allow a deeper experience of the music that is embodied in the movement of the human body. And now I would like to tell you a few sentences about uh, my uh, artistic conception related to the two different uh, Shakespeare songs. The first one, Father Method. My artistic concept follows the music. Artist choreography is based uh, on the relationship between two instruments, the voice and the piano. I focus on absolute music without meaning of the lyrics. It was intentional. My choreography is a kind of a scene uh, in which four girls, maybe ladies of the court, are having a terrible time. They are playing, talking, laughing, running. In fact, two performers present the piano movements and the other two present the both movements. The musical relationship between two instruments determines the space in which the performers move. The next Shakespeare sonnet, composed by Stanislav Solka, Monica, could you wait to skip for the other side? In this case, my artistic concept follows both music and lyrics. I went deeper in the meaning of the lyrics. My choreography, I have played on couple. In fact, I went into the role of the man. We can observe the relationship between a woman and a man in love. The relationship resulted from the text of the song determining the movement and relation of the two performers. Sometimes they are close, sometimes far apart, but they look at each other. The cheerful and joyful character of the music is reflected in the expressive movement of the performers, whose tiny smooth shape their personal relationship. Uh, so uh, now I want to invite you to the performance, Polish Contemporary Music in Movement Images. Uh, they will be, you will see my choreography of music and the first two will be the sonnet of Shakespeare, but probably we have to change, I mean about technical, because we can switch uh, another computer, yes. But do you think it's not possible to turn off the lights? Yeah, sure. You see this. Okay. <laughs> but, but I don't know. How, yes, uh, can I re remove the the camera? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Maybe we can. So maybe we try. 
This is, uh, okay. This is the result of my research related to the two sonnets, Shakespeare sonnets. The first, Pavel Mekhetin, so wait for the moment. Uh, performance students of the European Sevilla Improvisation Department at the Academy of Music in France. Huh? So we have no connection yet. No. Okay. Um, and so what? Oh, do, 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 yeah. It's a problem because probably it's not so. so. Okay, so I try. Keep my fingers crossed. Oh, disappear again. Oh, 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 oh. Maybe, maybe, yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know why. Still we have some. I know it's sensitive. Uh huh. Moment, moment. moment. Uh, the table is unstable. Yes. So maybe better to schedule the computer. But my adapter does work everywhere. Mm -hmm. just, just, just a moment. Mm -hmm. Try me. Ah. And you can put it in the table. Yes. 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 Yes, but that's the end. Oh, thank you. Oh, 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 Mm. Okay, and what is called the tablet? I, I think it's not a good idea because you. No. So uh, maybe. Do you have a USB? Yes, I have. So we can. Uh -huh. Okay. We can. So, okay, okay, USB okay. Ba ba we maybe we try to to switch on the USB. Yes, it will be better. Because you know, it's it's not it's the work hard work and it's not. No, 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 no. It's not a good tempo, probably. So we have some problem, technical problem. Just a moment. I try to try to put try to put the flash. Mm -hmm. I think it's about the connection between the uh, screen and. And the one on this time. I don't know why. A week ago, I was in the Academy of Music and Dance in Israel. Ah, uh, Barcelona. <laughs> Bar yeah. uh, Barcelona concert, yeah. <laughs> Barcelona concert, yes. Pavel Mekietin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Shall we live? Are they still 
Compose the music and the. Uh, oh, 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 yeah, uh, I'm sorry. And another song that composed by Stanislav Soika. Uh, performance. Me and my student, Julia Bohańska, student of the European. Yes, yes Soika. So maybe. Trzeba i wolę w zapasie Do tego wilicie dręczy Próbując w mozole Czy do twej woli jego wolę dodać da się Niech suplikam ta twoja odmowa nie boli Daj mu dowoli tu nic za dość twojej woli Wolisz, aby wola twa pojemna Choć raz dla woli wila Schronieniem się stała Tu tylko wola innych Wda ci się przyjemna A mojej czask nadziei Nigdy nie zapała I suplikam ta twoja odmowa nie boli Może choć pełne wody i w dodatku soli Wchłania deszcz w podobnej roli Ty, miła, w wolę bogata do swej tak przestronnej Wolę wila, by twą wolę wypełniła Niech suplikam, ta twoja odmowa nie boli Daj mu dowoli, czy mi zadość twojej woli Daj mu dowoli, czy mi zadość twojej woli My, my uh, title of my presentation and the performance. So it was happened in 2020, as far as you know, it's happened in 2020. Mm -hmm. 
but for me, uh, the pandemic has started with a very hard time because my mother died in the end of February 2020, even though I was in Belgrade. No, this up. It was, it was so touching for me. And the pandemic has started, and I couldn't believe myself was to, to play the piano. And one, one day, and second, and third, I, I played the piano. And I decided that maybe it will be some kind of composition of my own. And after after two years, I put the, the title near to hope. What does it mean, hope? To hope. The first hope for the better life for my mother, and another hope for the better life for humanity after the pandemic. So first, uh, so I uh, I invite you, I encourage you to see my uh, to listen to my other's composition near to a hope. And my choreography of music performed by myself, and you will see two gardens, one garden during the pandemic, and another one, um, my new garden after the pandemic. Number super. Yes, this one.
had to announce to my colleague uh, from Academy of Music and Design, uh, Polish composer uh, Marek Czarniewicz. So we cooperate to the years, I mean, about the aspect music and movement. So I want to present you my program of music for the piece of music transparent for string and time and authors of multimedia Pavel Vida. Uh, uh, transparent. Mm -hmm. Is, uh, and the second by Marek Czarniewicz came from the movie Shot for art, piano, and a ocarina. A program of music, my uncle's performance, me and Shenya Huang, the students of the European, European Integration Academy of Music in Gdańsk. So we are in Barcelona, the beautiful city near the Mediterranean Sea. I invited a Polish, a Polish artist in this movie. Yes, multimedia Pavel Vida.
I spend with Monica and A and transfer with with the Polish contemporary yoga uh, movement. Thank you, Monica. Greetings from Barcelona. <laughs> what a teacher you can say here. <laughs> but we, we know exactly what to do. Thank you, you, uh, you uh, have to say, uh, ask me and uh, invite me to the cooperation with you. Oh, all right. Thank you. Here I have your help. <laughs> Both of you once again for, uh, for this fascinating double presentation, like both theoretical and artistic. Fascinating. Uh, okay, so uh, I presume uh, there will be questions, and I, I presume we will have time since we get around. So we have plenty of time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I already knew you must say yes. Can you say please? Yes. In ballet school, it's the reason, for example, that the, uh, 
mistakes uh, dancer are more how to say uh, uh, conscious of idea link music and movement yeah because of course the dancer are more skilled technically so it's a difference between the me for example even though i have never tried any kind of dance yes so so i'm a break to express uh here and it was happened maybe five or ten years ago that i was born to be organist to so connect the music and movement through the body yes so thank you for for rather your conclusion and uh, it was really uh it is honor and again uh, monica thank you very much you uh, you invite me to the cooperation because it's not the first time we, we uh, cooperate and present the research our uh, the result our research 2018 in verona during the during the uh, generative uh, congress so it was also for me uh, very interesting <laughs> Well, uh, thank you for this uh, presentation. We uh, have, have uh, made a step uh, away from uh, the talks and talks and talks we were listening to. <laughs> maybe it's it's something great. what we need, <laughs> especially those pink clients going back there to reset our brains after everything. But, uh, my question was actually uh, I'm um, as a music theorist, uh, mm -hmm. of course, everybody learned about of course, and his method and so on, but actually we don't know what to do with it. I mean, I've seen it in my books <laughs> for in my exams, but you said that you have a Eurythmics uh, department. Yeah. Uh, do you have some student, uh, do you have a separate study program? Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes and what do people uh, do after they finish that? I'm interested in so institutional status of that. What what can you do afterwards? Is it popular? Where the eurythmic curve? So we have eurythmic <laughs> eurythmic I would say uh, as much as it's uh, impossible. So our system, I mean, the Polish system of eurythmic, yeah, absolutely have to say uh, uh, it's uh, brilliant. I mean about this because the level of teaching in Eurythmic has a great tradition in Poland. So we also celebrate 100, yes, yeah, practice with that process of decades by decades, generation by generation. It's not just only my opinion, but, but I'm not the kind of person to express uh, about myself. So uh, my mother and my father are also uh, explaining that the other person express uh, opinion about uh, us, yes. So uh, many, many times during the uh, international congress and conference, Europe and and difference and difference, uh, and not only in Europe and abroad, the people from from Geneva, the Institute of Geneva, because they have quarter in a hard quarter in a in a teaching field, Europe mix middle, how to say, uh, tell us and confirm that Europe's Poland is really a very good level of teaching. Mm -hmm. So we have six academy in Poland that the students can continue their education yes uh, and develop their skin in this field and you ask me about the possibility to to get work yes so still we have to less students uh, because we need because the work is uh is uh how to say um, uh, is even our press school. We start in a press school that we have a strictly uh, eurythmics uh, kind of uh, music education in the first grade in music school, primary music school, second music school. And they can continue like me, for example, because I thought that every levels of eurythmics education uh, and the high music school and then academics, yes. So after our graduated even uh, on the bachelor's or master's degree, uh, can know any how to say a problem to find a job. Because so they might merely teach at schools. Yes, yeah, at schools and uh, not only uh, not only schools, but yes, it's in a different place and uh, uh, cultural uh, centers. But first, our graduated uh, we prefer to, to to work as a professional teacher of eurythmics and. And a primary and secondary music school, yes. And even though Eurythmics is a subject offered in ballet school for four or six years, and every actor schools and film schools, so we have a great tradition in developed. So it's the reason um, 
that I'm always, I'm always how to say, very um, honored to spread that across the university and they need uh, the Congress because it's not about the rhythmics, but it's about the uh, musical meanings, but what doesn't mean the music in fact? It is the language, so we can we talk to uh, Monica uh, present the, uh, uh, her part of presentation about the relationship between the music and literature and literature and, and music. But in fact, the music is a language. Yes. So, what does it mean to cross this language is uh, to contemplate the musical language in the other language group? And of course, we can add emotional state, our mind and soul, our expression. That's great, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I also had a uh, question. So, both of you have, I suppose, Monica, you can hear me, right? Uh, Monica Swishush, do you hear us? Monica, can you hear us? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay, so uh, firstly, I, I have a question to you. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, maybe it's a dumb question. But uh, it grabbed my attention uh, when you were talking about uh, artist. You use, use the word artistic in process and artistic in process. I think I wonder whether there is a significance of using the word artistic. I mean, like, a, there is there non-artistic in process and in process, or, 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 and, if, and if it is, uh, is there a way in which artistic is special from non-artistic? Yes, uh, uh, and uh, artistic in phrases uh, opposite uh, uh, phrases. Phrases uh, is term uh, literary, uh, term uh, poetry, term uh, uh, function, uh, philosophy, and uh, Greek uh, history liter literary. Uh, uh, Artistic in phrases, uh, my definition uh, opposite uh, uh, phrases, artistic. Uh, I uh, uh, choose uh, composition, uh, intermedial composition, uh, intermedial composition uh, with uh, emotional, uh, uh, emotional aspects. Uh, Composition, uh, chor choreographic uh, composition uh, with intermedial aspects, uh, two media, uh, three media, uh, multimedia uh, aspects, uh, and um, prob uh, problematic uh, definition. Uh, I, uh, I, uh, my science uh, project. Uh, I, I don't know. Okay, uh, so I, thank you anyway. I'm like, uh, uh, yeah, that's actually a huge problem to, to think about. And I have uh, another question to Anna, which I'm true, quite sure is that question. And it stems from my general insufficient knowledge of chakras, uh, <laughs> that was theory. But it's like when you were talking about this, you know, uh, this, and I, okay, and I, I knew that, that like, like so that uh, there is this this unity between you know movement and yeah. music and so forth, and it, it, like the unity of expression. That hit me that like uh, of course as a as a former Wagner scholar, that like actually Wagner's theory in uh, in opera and drama had like a huge passage when he is explaining that how uh, how we want to to unite reunite uh, uh, movement poetry and music as it was. In ancient Greek theater, as he argues. Yeah. So my question is: uh, Did dark rose also have such a uh, such an ideal uh, yes. in the past? Yes, yes, because he was very interested in culture, Greek culture. It so it's also Greek. Greek yes, theater. yes, absolutely, also Greek, because the the twenty gesture are how to say uh, inspired by the gesture of the Greek culture, mm -hmm. and that was it was the base because when we compare the this gesture from, for example, micrography of music, probably we can find some link, but it's because the music is changed. And but we will see the first, the, the photo for the first uh, performance in Hellerau. The Hellerau is nowadays also the very important point in the Croesus, uh, past the Croesus heritage. It was 
in the beginning of 20th century, it was the Berlin Institute, it was the Institute founded for two German brothers, especially for the Dark Cross. So the dark, it was the they, it was absolutely how to say amazing because for the one year they built a beautiful building, huge building, very uh, inside it was how to say the concept amazing with the lights, etc. etc. Now, so the first one of the first part of the first presentation, the interpretation of the um, uh, Orpheo and Rebecca Bar Gluck. Yes, it was uh, author's uh, interpretation by any track that cross. You will see that the tuning, it is the close relationship. It goes, it went from the Greek. So yes, yes, it was absolutely, he was absolutely fascinated. Not only some culture, Greek culture, but also the system of music education in ancient Greek. And I have question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> My fiance went to one school and like she always uh, Sorry, mentioned, I, I she always so mentioned clever. European houses and second, was there a direct cooperation between uh, between Dark Rose and Rudolf Steiner or uh, or it was just Steiner uh, adapting Dark Rose's method? So yes, it is a good question because it is because what was the, the how to say uh, in the end of the 19th century, not the beginning, the end of the 19th century, any gender cross dot that dream about some kind of musical uh, education with the music will be connected with the new movement. And any gender cross, and also, for example, when I mean as well, it is the one of the person and the new wave of the of the pedagogical style at the beginning of 20. And it is a good question because I never know who was first. Yes, you know, or Dark Rose or Orf, etc. They have say inspired each other, in my opinion. And Dark Rose, what Dark Rose, and probably uh, you know about Isadora Danka, uh, the dance song. He danced without any shoes, yes, just only curved to the tuning, so it's also the real. But it was, it would be uh, Dark Rose uh, invented uh, Eurythmics like an opposite system, in, uh, opposite to the uh, classical ballet. Uh, he was a king of the nature, I mean, uh, technique nature. So uh, I have, I'm very happy because um, my cousin uh, delivered me some unique films uh, from the process, uh, Helena, uh, yes, archive, archive, yes, from archive. Then the students, both, both the girls and boys also. Uh, practice, practice uh, outside of the building, on the field, the field, the ground, you know, the connection with the, with the nature. So, of course, but now someone uh, can ask me, okay, but when I uh, follow your choreography of music, you have not so, you use not just only natural uh, kind of the techniques. Yes, but every technique goes through the music because the epicentrum of that process is the music, yes. So when I, for example, start to work with some classical kind of the music, I try to keep the mood uh, and aesthetics of the classical period in history, but sometimes I go some across, uh, you know, uh, uh, tendency, for example, yes? But I'm still fascinated, even though I have practiced 40 years and I practice in the different uh, aspects because I'm not also teacher and professor academy of music or the primary school, high, uh, high music school, but I always try to find the new way, new way to pass their process his heritage and how to say, and be so more creative. And I find many times, for example, and find the link. I find my own way, for example, I was the first person in Poland, I mean about the European, who goes into the, the environment of the prisoners. I had my free project in the prison. Yes, I, I cooperate with people handicapped because the Eurythmics has uh, three levels, one pedagogical level, second artistic level, and third it is a therapy. But you know what, what I mean about the population generation after, after, after the pandemic time, but it's, it's the very helpful uh, tools for everybody. So you, I mean about me, and people who want to offer you rhythmics should be creative and use your personal experience and fast for the new age. 
Are you satisfied? Thank you. Very much. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you again for the time spent together with the, uh, Monica me and the Polish music because it is the goal of, of my performance. Thank I you. I really like my <laughs> I never heard of him before, but uh, it's a shame on me because it's all really awesome. <laughs> Okay, and more. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I can think uh, it because the people from Poland oh. <laughs> so after after English speak in Poland. So thank you. They are the moderator of the session, our panel. Thank you. And thank you. <laughs> Bye, Monica. Bye. Bye. Thank you.